that's white. When a new camera comes out like the R7, they tell you to buy a new chip that matches the camera. What's the difference? Do you really need to? In this video, I am going to try and explain what the differences and benefits are of a faster chip for something like the R7, while something like an 800D won't benefit as much. So stay tuned and we will see what the differences are. So as I mentioned in the intro, there's three chips I'm just going to talk about today. I am not reviewing them, I'm just explaining what the differences are and why and what and when you want each one. So I'm going to put up a photo first of all three chips. I am unable to show you them as at least one of them is currently being used whilst recording. Um, the three chips, we've got the Strontium, the SanDisk and the Adata chip. Adata, Adata, I guess that kind of depends where you come from. It's the same thing. A-D-A-T-A. It's the fastest chip that I own. Um, when it comes to SD cards, sellers want you to think bigger number better. 300 megabytes per second, 150 megabytes per second. They always advertise the biggest number first and that's almost always the read speed. So when it comes to SD cards and cameras, you care about the write speed. Unless you're in a circumstance where you need to wipe that data off that chip as soon as possible to get the next chip in and going, fast write speed is more important than your read speed. So keep an eye on that. As an example, these three chips that I'm just going to show you a photo of now have three advertised speeds. You'll see it says the speed on the chip, but it does not mention the write speed. So I'm just going to put a quick chart up showing you the reads and the writes for each one. And you'll start to notice a trend. The reads are always higher than the writes. Writing is more intensive. I'm not getting into that. Just it's more effort to write than it is to read. With something like the R7, the writes are really important. You can shoot photos at 30 shots per second in the case of the electronic shutter, or a hun uh, sorry, 15 shots per second with the mechanical shutter. Emptying the buffer onto the chip as soon as possible is super important. So without going into the technicalities of SD cards, the versions, the naming, I'm not the right person to explain that. I'm going to put up a quick chart here. What you'll see is the advertised read speed, the advertised write speed, which you can always find, it's just not normally the first number they give you, and how that shows the difference on the R7. The way I'm going to do these tests, I'm going to wipe the chips, I'm going to do a raw format on the Canon itself, the standard for each camera, sorry for each chip, then I'm just going to hold the shutter down until the buffer locks me out. I'll do it both for the mechanical and I'll do it for the electronic and I'll do it at a few different speeds to give an idea. Once done, I'll take the chip out, I'll plug it into my computer, I'll count the amount of photos. This will be consistent because the camera will lock me out from taking more photos when that buffer is full. I'll record the number. The time I can just calculate based on how fast photos were taken. However, for all intents and purposes, I am going to photograph a white wall, which will be the same white wall with the same amount of lighting for every test. And I will make sure that as soon as the buffer locks me out, I'll take the finger off the trigger. One other thing I do not mention is I'm just making sure to wipe the card. I'm making sure to do a low level format. And I'm also making sure to start on the electronic and then continue on the mechanical. This is then repeated for all three of the cards. Anyone watching this video so far will notice the omission of me mentioning minimum write speeds. Minimum write speeds are the number that is most important when you are doing video whilst the maximum write speed is what's going to matter the most when you are taking photos.
on the screen now you will now see said charts and let's go through them and I'll explain why what matters most. These three chips that I have used are on purpose. The strontium is very old. It no longer sustains its max write speed, which we can see it takes 46 seconds to write some 40 to 45 photos. When the chip was newer, it was faster. Chips wear out, so always keep that in mind. Their data can write extreme amounts of data in very short periods of time, as you can see by dumping the entire buffer, 45-ish photos, in six seconds. The SanDisk, though old, is a faster chip and you can see that 16 seconds is it's acceptable it's the middle ground when you're looking at chips buy them to match the use case if you're doing video even if it's 4k and even if it's on something like the r7 the sandisk is more than enough for pretty much every 4k video setting this r7 has but it suffers a little bit when i'm starting to do photos on the 800D as a comparison, however, the SanDisk is to the Strontium what the Adata is to the SanDisk on the R7. The Strontium is more than enough for pretty much everything the 800D can do. It can sustain 1080p video absolutely fine, and it can handle all photos except for the most demanding sets when I'm doing the fastest setting on the 800D. Must point out that the 800D is not a fast camera, so it doesn't really matter all that much. But when I purchased it, it was a good upgrade. So for future purchasing of SD cards, keep these things in mind. The maximum write will affect the speed at which the buffer can empty the most, whilst the minimum write is what will be most important for video. If you don't match those speeds to the bandwidth you require, you will start to find yourself limited on what you can do. But that's normally the card, not the camera, assuming you know what your camera can do when you buy it. So. Now that I've given a quick explanation, hopefully when you're looking at a wall full of SD cards, you're not like, is, is fast better? Do I need the fastest chip? It will depend on your camera, it will depend on the chip, and it will depend on what you want to do. So next time you're out trying to buy an SD card, just keep that in mind. Fastest might be better, but you may not notice. So try and save a buck, put it into something that will benefit you more than a faster chip. Be a lens, a tripod, Hopefully that is some information that can help you guys out in any future situations where you're trying to buy an SD card and you just don't know which ones to get. So on that note, everyone, please have a good night.